Good morning. This is Sailor the Piper Man. Piper the Sailor Man coming to you this morning. I feel pretty good. Kind of depressed yesterday, you know. You know, people that are retired go through that sometimes. You know, the older you get, this is random thoughts. The older you get, the less people you knew as a child are no longer around. For example, when I was uh, living in New York, you know, I had a lot of friends in elementary school and high school, and I had a good friend named Leon Lawrence Benefield. He was from Georgia. They had migrated, we went to New York, mother, single mother with two kids, Larry, who went on to become a black belt, having his dojo, and then he was like a body, uh, a public school uh, a guard in one of the schools, one of our schools that he went to. And Leah, who, who we became great friends, and we used to play this game called stickball. And he was very good, I was very good. We hung out, we were the same class, same social studies class. He was very studious. At the, at the same time, he kind of introduced me to rhythm and blues music and funk music and African-American culture. Now, growing up, in New York, you, you, you're exposed, it's a metropolis, you're exposed to all kind of music, you know, but I was, I was odd. I was, I, I used to love, at a very young age, 10, 11, I liked the Celtic music, Irish, English music, music with drums and flute. Now, off the daydream, I was I was a Viking. You know, I saw a, a great picture with Kirk Douglas called the Vikings. You know, we see the old picture, swashbuckling pictures of uh, Errol Flynn and all the other pictures that came out in the 40s, 50s about Spanish galleons and sailors and sword play so that would seem to me I, I I connected with that period in history from the 16th century to the 18th century pirates and corsairs and you know, I studied the history of all that and that led me to uh, you know I wanted to study about the Celtic people And I began reading the Bible and I read the, the book of Galatians. Is it Galatians. Who, who, who are these Galatians? So I did a, a brief history and I found that the Galatians or Gallic were Celtic people that lived in Asia Minor, what, what is now Turkey. And I'm saying to myself, what the heck? Now I'm 13, right? What the heck are, are Irish people doing in Asia Minor? Now I didn't know my history well enough to understand there was, there's always been human uh, migration and that uh, these same people, uh, many of them migrated over Normandy and into England and from England into Celt Celtic tribes. Now, I didn't know this, but I always felt connected to the Scottish, Irish, Viking, Norwegian, Scandinavian, Hebrews. No reason why I liked the blonde hair, blue eyed women. I, I was attracted to them. Not sexually, just I, I just like their mannerisms, the way they were, and uh, oftentimes they would date me. You know? They'll date me. Beautiful women. <laughs> you know, and uh, I had never gone out with an Afri 
African-American woman and had never gone out with a black woman, ever. They go, come on, me, yo. I'm telling you, never. It was always uh, mixtures, uh, mostly English. English uh, with Indian, English with Japanese, English with some other hodgepodge in their makeup. And I used to love all the stories about the early frontiersmen and the trappers and when I studied Lewis and Clark expedition, how they went from one, how Lewis and Clark actually used the pipe and other Indians to speak the languages of the people there and how he was given a pipe to travel through the territory. And, and, and when they came upon the Indian, he would show this pipe and that was a safe passage, believe it or not. It wasn't the woman. It was the pipe he had. Now, this story came to me from a, 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 a guy I met in the Navy who was from Oregon. And he was descended from the first Russian Russians that came. People are, Realize that, but Oregon belonged to Russia at one time, and so did uh, Alaska. So, if you go to Oregon, there are many Russian Orthodox Christians, little churches. I don't know the population there were fishermen. I was stationed in uh, Bremerton, Washington, and I traveled to Puget Sound and went up the Columbia River to. Indian reservations, all the way up to Vancouver, by ship. So here's this this kid, Puerto Rican young guy, at, at, at uh, 20 years old, you know, traveling abroad, you know, seeing people outside of my culture and making connections with them and, and with me, why I felt a certain way about a group, why I'm attached to a certain group, why I like back folk people, why I like people from the Appalachia, why I like people from Tennessee, and, and, and uh, I get along fine with, 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 with Southern people, and it had to do with my, my DNA. Sometimes you don't know why you do certain things and you do it, and it's based on your DNA. Your ancestors did it at one time. So when my, so when my, uh, DNA came back, and I had Viking, and I had Welsh, and I had Celtic, and I had Scottish, and English, and my blood, and I was like, how in the hell? And I have told the story how these people who had all this DNA in them came to Puerto Rico. Married English women, I mean, uh, Indian women, and so from 15th century to the 18th century, Puerto Rico was under Spanish, the Spanish colony, and it was a station station ground for military expeditions going into the New World, going into New Orleans. They founded the first. Spanish territories in Texas and New Mexico and Southern California. So a lot of these men, my ancestors traveled with the conquistadors. And many of my ancestors were conquistadors who married Indian women. It doesn't pop up, but I know through over history that one of my ancestors married a Zuni woman decided to stay. Their ancestors, they had Spanish, but still you could still claim the Spanish citizens came back to Puerto Rico and then they, they married back in the 17th century. So, I, 
I'm talking a little about this because of one event. I had gone to Flagstaff, Arizona. I was traveling through New York. I grabbed a tip trail, a trail, a trailway bus, and I wanted to cross America. My soul, my backpack, I had my day, my pipe. So I mapped out when I got to St. Louis to travel from St. Louis to Albuquerque, from Albuquerque through Flagstaff. It was in the res Indian reservation there, the Spaniards. So I ended up in Flagstaff. Went to Flagstaff. I stayed there. They had a couple of motels and Indian reservations. They had these places where you could buy Indian goods. And the, fo and the following day, I went on a tour. And I'm talking to people, all kind of people. And there was a tour to this, to see these, these caves. And as I recall, I heard the word Nephilim. <coughs> Nephilim, I heard that from the Bible. Nephilim, this is the giant people, the ancient giant people that the Israelites saw when they were going in the land, they sent people in the land. And according to the Torah, uh, they came back to Joshua and told Josh, some of them came back and told Joshua, oh, we can't, we can't conquer those people because those, those are giants in the land and they were fearful. So somehow Joshua rebuked them and God had promised. Don't you believe God's promises? God said, we're going to take the land, we're going to take the land. Eventually they went in and they wiped out these giants. One of those giants was named Og, and I believe Tunnel talked about uh, uh, David and Goliath, that there was still remnant left during the time of David of these giants. I think they were Philistines, Philistines or something like that. So, in Flagstaff, Arizona, I take this tour. So we got to go down into the canyon. I don't know what river ran through. I think it was the Colorado River. We got on these rafts. The rafts took us to this place. Huge opening. We, we settled the rafts up. And the guy was telling us, he was like, I think he was Apache, Navajo, mixed, white, Apache, Navajo. He began telling the stories how very few people have gone there. So when I saw the opening, it, it was like very western, something like from India. So as we go, go inside, it was already set up, they already had lights in place. When we go in there and I look, there were giant Buddhists, Buddha statues in Arizona where they have all the canyons, the Arizona canyons, Grand Canyons, and we go up there, you just hear the river still running and I'm seeing this spectacular view of all these Buddhas inside this, these caves. Huge, tall, you know, and he goes, I want to show you something, I'm showing you this, they're doing excavations right now, so he, we went down, down, it was like, I don't know if you ever heard of the Ray Caverns, I've been there, you know, I think it's West Virginia, East. Eagles Cave, so we're traveling down, we got lights, and we got these helmets with lights on and everything, we're traveling, all of a sudden, lo and behold, man, you can see the excavation side, you can see the surveyor instruments, everything was laid out and, and, and a huge floodlight, diffused floodlight aiming towards this, this burial ground. When I get there, there was a 13 
14 to 13 foot skeletal remains of a giant. Huge teeth, huge forehead. The ridge was sticking out, almost like a Neanderthal looking. Now I had taken um, general anthropology, so I knew my skeletal structures, zygomatic process, mandibular, the nose region. So I can more or less figure it, it was almost like Mongolian looking, almost like people from uh, Afghanistan. You know, they, they had the Asiatic look to it. Bone. And you can see that the teeth, he still has the bicuspids, long, sharp, almost like Dracula looking, man. I said, these are car carnivorous, they eat flesh eaters. Big tall. And so I'm looking at them, I'm looking at the feet. The feet was like about 25 to 26 feet long. <laughs> Huge. 14, I was, I was scared to look at it, man. I was like, man, this thing get up from there. And I know Indian burial grounds, we're not supposed to be there. So I was like, is he Indian? I kept asking, is he Indian? Is he Indian? I get out. You know, I got some superstitions there. Get Indian, you know, they pray over in and whoever comes to gets cursed and all that. And I believe... I believe you can be cursed. The Bible says it. I keep coming across, tech, cursed is the man of this and the man of that. And, you know, I, I respect the dead, man. I don't mess with that. Yeah, you, you don't know. I, I want to, like, I'll tell you some more stories. Anyway, when I saw that, uh, Huge skeletal remains. That's the first that I saw. I, I mean, I see pictures and stuff like that, but I actually saw. It. And he said, "Go and touch it." And so I touched up the, the femur bone. You can read down. I said, "This is real. This is not there's no cast." I was looking for these casts that they put. It was it was complete, man. I'm saying to him, "What are these Indian Buddha statues here?" Which seemed like it was like a place where they worship. Like were they Buddhists? How long how long ago did they come? And why did they they do a a site there? You gotta remember back then the Grand Canyons weren't as deep as they are now because of all the water and the wind running through, the erosion that has has made them made the cliffs a lot higher than they were way back then, 2,000 years ago. This is B.C. These guys, these people had to be there in B.C. So, the theory was that they were there before the Indians migrated, migrated south to South America, and the Indians were on the east, east coast, and they were pushed toward so a lot of the Indian law, especially the Hopi tribes are talking about giants, how these giants used to run after buffaloes. I said, well, they run after buffalo, they couldn't have been Buddhists. Because Buddhists don't eat meat. They used to be seen running after buffalo, spearing them, killing the buffalo, eating them raw. I said, oh my God. So that, that's one thing I saw that, that I tell people now, they don't, they don't believe me. You know, when I get out of here, I'm telling you. Another, another story is true. I was on the USS New Orleans and we had gone south of the equator. We visited Chile and then we went to Eastern Island. We came on Eastern, off the coast of Eastern Island about 3,000 miles out 
into the Pacific to Chile. There was Easter Island. I always read about it. I read uh, uh, this Dane High High Thor, whatever his name was. He Contiki expedition. He had gone out there past the island. And I don't think he ever went to that, but we got to the island. And when I got there, there were some local people left, but majority were tourists and stuff like that. One man looks at me and goes, are you from Fiji? No. Are you from New Guinea? No. Are you from America Samosa? <laughs> no. Are you Australian? To them, they saw my body type as being like, poly, in some sense, Polynesian. They thought, you look like Eastern Islander. Like Hollywood, we back there. I said, all right, trust me. I'm from an island, but I'm from like the Caribbean island. So, however, human migration, I got like 1% Polynesian, which means one ancestor. Happened to be Polynesia. How they got to Puerto Rico, I have no idea. They intermarried and they came. The Arawak Indians, they got Arawak Indians in it. So they, a lot of Arawak Indians have a lot of Polynesians. So you can see the migration from, from the Polynesia crossing over South America and into the Caribbean basin. So it was very interesting. When I got to the island, I saw them statues and I saw one that got dig. It was larger. That, those statues were large in Easter Island, underground, they didn't want to go. I said, who oh, wanted the hell? How is it possible for a man my size to do anything, to put them things up? You know, they had a place in art. So one of the guys on the tour, said, I want to show you something. So we went into a cave, and there were remains of not a complete skeleton, remains of a skull, remains of a uh, metacarpal hand, and, and remains of a jaw. The estimate size of that thing was about 20 foot tall. So when I hear about all these people with mythology talking about that the pyramids in South America, the pyramids. I had gone to Chichen Itza and the Yucatan Peninsula and I saw pyramids from the head of skulls lined up, put up. These people were like sacrificing to these giants and a lot of these giants were looked at as, as God. You know, when I saw, I, I think it was Predator versus the alien of movie, how these people from extraterrestrial aliens came to Earth. I wouldn't doubt it, man. I would doubt it one bit. Because when you look at those skulls, you, you look at the, the remains, these things don't look human. I mean, they have skeletal. They're so huge, so big. And a lot of soldiers came back from Afghanistan, I said, yeah, they see skulls uh, from Iran, from, from a place called where the Anunnaki's were, that they found all this stuff. And the British Museum has it, and they hiding this stuff from the people, not, not, not letting us know. I, I don't understand all this stuff of why you gotta hide the truth. If you're a scientific and you're doing research, right? You're supposed to uncover the truth. But well, obviously, the mass population has been lied to, man. Some of the earliest people were giants. I wouldn't be surprised if the pyramids were made by giant people, man. In the pyramids in, in uh, Machu Picchu and a lot of these pyramids you know there's too many people around the world with the same story we 
go to India to see the Giants. You go to Middle East and Giants. South America the Giants. In the Americas they were Giants. The Japanese and Chinese they were Giants. The same thing with a flood. Everywhere you go, this, it, their myth, myth, myth story has this huge deluge, flood. How the Black Sea was, was flooded and all these civilizations were in the Black Sea region when When the flood settled, there were all these civilizations. I, I believe there's an Atlantis. I really do. I'm doing my research study, and there were giants. Makes you think, huh? When I look at these basketball players, seven, seven foot, if you ever go to a game, you see how fast they roll, you see how high they jump. These are just seven foot. What a seven foot. I remember watching Kareem do Jabbar, Lou Alcindor. Running down the court, running faster than I could ever run. 25 miles an hour, jumping up in the air, stuffing the ball. Strong, big. You can imagine those giants back there, they were warrior class. They were hunters. They hunted other men, you know? You heard about the Greek talk about the Titans? How big is strong, Hercules? There's something to that. I think sooner or later they're going to have to come out with the truth. And somebody gets bold enough to come out and say, you know, like, there are giants out there. That's why 